Welcome to the sixth Sunday in Ordinary Time. Happy are those who walk in the way of the Lord, who seek God with their whole hearts. Let us worship God and let us pray. O God of blessing, you call us to be one with you and your creation in love, faithfulness, and truth. Help us to carry out the vows we make to adore you with our whole heart, to live in mutual support of one another, and to love as if your reign has fully come. Amen. Let us now hear the word of God as it comes to us from the Holy Scriptures. The first lesson this morning is taken from Colossians um, chapter 3, verses 1 to 17. Hear the word of the Lord. If then you were raised with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ is, sitting at the right hand of God. Set your mind on things above, not on things on the earth. For you died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is our life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. Therefore, put to death your members which are on the earth, fornication, uncleanliness, passion, evil desire, and covetousness, which is idolatry. Because of these things, the wrath of God is coming upon the sons of disobedience, in which you yourselves once walked when you lived in them. But now... You yourselves are to put off all these anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy language out of your mouth. Do not lie to one another, since you have put off the old man with his deeds, and have put on the new man who is renewed in knowledge according to the image of him who created him. Where there is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcised nor uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave nor free, but Christ is all and in all. Therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, put on tender mercies, kindness, humility, meekness, long-suffering, bearing with one another and forgiving one another. If anyone has a complaint against another, even as Christ forgave you, so you also must do. But above all these things, put on love, which is the bond of perfection." And let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to which also you were called in one body, and be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. And whatever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. The word of the Lord. And the second reading is taken from Matthew chapter 5, verses 17 to 37. Hear the word of the Lord. Do not think that I come to destroy the law or the prophets. I did not come to destroy but to fulfill. For assuredly, I say to you, till heaven and earth pass away, one jot or one tittle, will by no means pass from the law till all is fulfilled. Whoever therefore breaks one of the least of these commandments and teaches men so shall be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever does and teaches them, he shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I say to you that unless your righteousness exceeds the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, you will by no means enter the kingdom of heaven. You have heard that it was said to those of old, You shall not murder, and whoever murders will be in danger of the judgment. But I say to you that whoever is angry with his brother without a cause shall be in danger of the judgment. And whoever says to his brother, Raka, shall be in danger of the council. But whoever says, You fool, shall be in danger of hellfire. Therefore, if you bring your gift to the altar and, and there remember that your brother has something against you, leave your gift there before the altar and go your way. 
First be reconciled to your brother and then come and offer your gift. Agree with your adversary quickly while you are on the way with him, lest your adversary deliver you to the judge. The judge hands you over to the officer and you be thrown into prison. Assuredly, I say to you, you will by no means get out of there till you have paid the last penny. You have heard that it was said to those of old, you shall not commit adultery. But I say to you that whoever looks at a woman to lust for her has already committed adultery with her in his heart. If your right eye causes you to sin, pluck it out and cast it from you. For it is more profitable for you that one of your members perish than for your whole body to be cast into hell. And if your right hand causes you to sin, cut it off and cast it from you. For it is more profitable for you that one of your members perish than for your whole body to be cast into hell. Furthermore, it has been said, whoever divorces his wife, let him give her a certificate of divorce. But I say to you that whoever divorces his wife for any reason except sexual immorality causes her to commit adultery. And whoever marries a woman who is divorced commits adultery. Again, you have heard that it was said to those of old, you shall not swear falsely, but shall perform your oaths to the Lord. But I say to you, do not swear at all, neither by heaven, for it is God's throne, nor by the earth, for it is his footstool, nor by Jerusalem, for it is the city of the great king. Nor shall you swear by your head, because you cannot make one hair white or black. But let your yes be yes, and your no, no. For whatever is more than these is from the evil one. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. O loving God, anoint us with your Holy Spirit as we hear your word this day. Fill us with your truth that we may walk in the ways of God and to the glory of your realm. Amen. Little Johnny had a quarrel with his younger brother, Willie. And before he said his night prayers, Johnny's mother said to him, Now I want you to forgive your brother. But Johnny was not in a forgiving mood. No, I won't forgive him, he said. Mother tried persuasions of every motherly variety, but nothing worked. And finally she said, What if your brother were to die tonight? How would you feel if you knew you hadn't forgiven him. And Johnny gave in, or so it seemed. He said, all right, I forgive him. But if he's alive in the morning, I'll get even with him. <laughs> the gospel invites us today to reconcile with our brothers and sisters first before we come to him. Jesus continues his Sermon on the Mount. Today's portion of the sermon contains 20 long verses. Jesus speaks about what has been heard in the past and what has to be listened to now. Jesus is not changing the law and the traditions passed on through the prophets, but he is applying a proper spirit to what had become far too legalistic. He explains the dictates of the law were for the head to guide the five senses. The spirit of Jesus is to form the heart as well as the mind. At one point, Jesus says, I say to you that everyone who is angry with his brother or sister is liable to the judgment court. In Greek, there are two words for anger. There is thumos, which was described as being like the flame which comes from a dried straw. 
It is the anger which quickly blazes up and which just as quickly dies down. It is an anger which rises speedily and which just as speedily passes. And then there is orge, which was described as anger that becomes inveterate. It is the long-lived anger. It is the anger of the person who nurses his or her wrath to keep it warm. It is the anger over which a person broods and which he or she will not allow to die. In his epistle to the church at Colossae, Paul orders his people to put off all anger and wrath, malice and insulting speaking. Even the highest pagan thinking saw the folly of anger. It was Cicero who said that when anger entered the scene, nothing could be done rightly and nothing sensibly. In a vivid phrase, Seneca called anger a brief insanity. Now, it is still uh, okay to be angry at things, because after all, it is a human emotion. But Jesus forbids forever the anger which broods, the anger which will not forget, the anger which refuses to be pacified, the anger which seeks revenge. If we are to obey Jesus, all anger like this must be banished from our lives, and especially that anger which lingers far too long. It is a warning bell to remember that no one can call himself or herself Christian and lose their temper because of any personal wrong that they have suffered. I read something not too long ago. Back in the 1930s, Harvard University conducted a study of adult development Tracking their lives from youth through old age, the 724 participants were chosen from a group of Harvard students and a cohort of underprivileged teenage boys living in Boston. At two-year intervals, subjects completed detailed questionnaires encompassing all aspects of their lives, and over the years, Many had their DNA sampled, and some even agreed to brain scans, among other tests. In 2023, early 2023, the study has broadened to include three generations, totaling some 1,300 descendants of the original participants. This is the longest-running study of human development, and it's fascinating. And I urge all interested to search online to read the reports. You will find it um, under what's called the Seven Day Happiness Challenge uh, in the New York Times, January 2023. The New York Times referenced the study during the first week of January in what they call the Seven Day Happiness Challenge, concluding from all the data, one very clear finding has emerged. Strong relationships are what make for a happy life. More than wealth, IQ, or social class, it's the robustness of our bonds that most determines whether we feel fulfilled. Now for us, as a community of faith, these findings should come as no surprise because week after week we gather to acknowledge that genuine happiness 
requires us to use the resources that God pours into our lives. To be a good parent, a good spouse, a good son or daughter, a good friend or neighbor, we need to trust those resources to give us the courage, strength, and dedication to equip us for our Christian ministry of loving service. And therein lies our fulfillment, therein lies our genuine happiness. As we reflect on today's gospel, we understand that Jesus' command to to reconcile with our brothers and sisters, to forgive, is a lifelong pursuit. And for many of us, it is one of the hardest parts of the gospel message to live up to. And so let me suggest that we take baby steps in practicing this aspect of our faith and take the seven-day forgiveness challenge this week. Let us begin on day one of our challenge and admit that there are those in our lives who cry out for our forgiveness. Happiness is where the action is, God's action. And God's action is revealed in our everyday lives. There we can learn to heal our relationships. There we can learn to practice forgiveness. There we can learn what we unconditionally give to others, we simultaneously give to ourselves. There we can learn that to give is to receive. And there in our everyday lives, we can learn to experience genuine happiness. In Jesus' name, amen. Let us look to God and let us pray. O oh, gracious Lord, we pray for the health and vitality of the church. You command us to honor you by loving one another and yet all too often there is quarreling and jealousy among us. Help us to live your law of love as we seek to grow into the full stature of Christ. We pray for the welfare of the world. You have blessed us with every skill and gift for nurturing the common good, and yet our self-centered ways incline our hearts toward evil. Strengthen us to work together for the mutual benefit of neighbors near and far, and for the life and prosperity of your reign on earth. We pray, O God, for the, the well-being of your creation. Our choices wreak havoc on the world you have made and put your planet in peril, and so guide our patterns of consumption for the flourishing of all creation and for generations yet unborn. O oh, gracious God, loving Father, we pray for all who suffer and are in need. We think of the victims, the families of the many victims in the earthquake in Syria and Turkey. You call us to care for one another with compassion and steadfast love. Be with our partners in service as they seek to, to help these people. Gracious God, equip us for the work of reconciliation, that we may offer hope and healing in the power of your name. And we pray today for all who are sick and dying. May your will for them be fulfilled. And so fill us with your mercy and kindness that we may care for them with loving hearts as you bring them to the wholeness of your peace. 
we commend all life to you, O God, knowing that you hear our prayers and answer them according to your will. Through Jesus Christ, we pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. Love the Lord, choose the good. Hold fast to God, so that you may flourish. And may the wisdom of God, the love of Christ, and the peace of the Spirit shine brightly in your lives, this day and always. Amen.